Welcome to the Pawn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your pawn or sex addiction. I'm your host, J.K. Amazy, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Today we're going to talk about how you hurt others when you use pornography. Now the prerequisite to this particular episode, to being open-minded to it, is honesty about the fact that you have probably created some stories about how your sexual fantasies, your sexual behavior, specifically your behavior with pornography, hasn't actually hurt anyone. And that's the prerequisite. Just accepting the fact that, hey, I may have created some stories in my head about this. The purpose of this episode is not to make you feel bad about yourself or make you feel guilty. It's simply about raising awareness It's about realizing that your behavior has not only created victims, but you have become a victim yourself as a result of your behavior. Now, whether you say, you know what, JK, I only watch free pornography, or you tell yourself, I've never paid for sex, right? I've never sexually assaulted anyone. I'm innocent. The truth is, people are always harmed regardless of whether you watch free pornography or whether you've never paid for sex or whether you've never sexually assaulted anyone. People are always harmed. Now, your behavior has hurt others if you view pornography in any form, if you pay for sex legally or illegally, when you break your commitment to friends, to family, to those you work with, because of your sexual behavior, you are hurting people. When you make your sexual satisfaction your number one priority, you are hurting others. When you don't take no for an answer in a sexual situation, even the most subtle sexual situation, that means when your wife or a partner brushes you off, or doesn't seem interested, and you keep going at it, you are hurting people. When you don't take care of yourself, your responsibilities, or you don't take care of your family, you are hurting others, right? Here's the thing. When you pay for sex, legally or illegally, you fuel the demand for sexual services. There is a huge industry, probably one of the largest industries on the planet right now, which is human trafficking. It is a very real thing. Children from all over the world are kidnapped and trafficked for sexual purposes. The same goes for women, and in a smaller amount, men and boys. But for the most part, it's women and children. And the truth is that the demand is way higher than the supply. The demand is fueled by pornography. Now, you may be listening to this podcast, and I want you to know that you're fortunate. You're fortunate in the sense that you have the awareness that your sexual behavior is a problem. But do you know that for the vast majority, millions and millions of men in the world, they do not know or believe, or even have any concept of their sexual behavior being a problem. They simply believe that if I want sex, I will have sex. Sex is an important thing. Sex is part of my identity, and it doesn't matter how I get it. I'm not saying these men are criminals. I'm just saying that sex is a priority for them, and cultures differ and vary uh, in different ways. When people are having sex and they are paying for sex, the truth is they don't really care where that person comes from, what their background is, or what they're dealing with. They don't think about that. Now, you may be a man listening to this who has sex with, let's just say, the, let's call it cheap prostitutes. That's one thing. A prostitute who you can, you're like, okay, yeah, maybe she came from a home where she struggled with some sort of abuse She's on drugs. She has mental health issues. That's one thing. It's a completely different thing 
when you are patronizing a high-end escort. Now, it's different because the story you tell yourself is different. You're like, well, this is probably her choice. I'm paying her hundreds or thousands of dollars for her companionship. She has the option to have sex with me or to not have sex with me. She seems to be living a pretty good life. She seems happy when she gives me the girlfriend experience. She's, she, she seems to really enjoy it. And you know what? I take care of myself. I think she actually enjoys my company. It makes no difference. It still fuels the demand for women. It still fuels the demand for sex, right? Maybe, on the other hand, you, you're one of those guys who at some point, or even now, has even thought about, oh man, what would it be like to be a porn star, right? You might think that being a porn star is something glamorous, that, oh man, like it's... Like, it, it's fun. You just get to have crazy sex, as much sex as you want. Like, that's great. I'd take that job anytime. But the truth is that being a porn star is not glamorous. Not for the women or for the men. There are STD risks. You eventually become dependent on sex with strangers. Because the first way and the easiest way that you've made money has been using your body. Porn stars struggle with mental health issues. Not only do they struggle with these issues, but they do not get the same access to health care or mental health care that other people do. Majority of these quote-unquote porn stars, we'll just call them sex workers, are forced to work. And when I say forced to work, it doesn't mean someone's forcing them to work. It means that their financial situation or the fact that they have kids, one thing or the other, is forcing them to go into this work. They do not have a choice. Don't be fooled by the whole women's empowerment thing by a fringe feminists who say that, oh, you know, like, it's empowering to them. They choose to do it. They enjoy it. Listen, when people are doing something and it's having a negative effect on them, they are going to band together to protect themselves, to protect what they're doing. To not be vilified. It's the same way that men who view pornography all the time will defend themselves. When they see me or hear me talk about it, there are always people who come out of the woodwork and say, oh my God, you know, you must be some Christian fundamentalist. You must have some repressed issues with sex. That's why you're trying to stop us from, you know, our way of life. There's nothing wrong with pornography. People will defend what they're doing, even if it's damaging them. And it's the same thing that happens with sex workers. They are mothers who engage in it, who get on these campsites and pretend to be somebody else because they have to pay and take care of their kids. Now, you don't know that. You don't know that Jenny or Brittany or whoever the hell you're talking to online and chatting with, you think she's, oh, she's a, you know, she's single, you know, she's a single girl just having some fun. Just, you know, she's making money on the side. It's, you don't know that she has two kids. You have no idea what she's doing. What she's presenting is her persona. There are so many questions that I ask clients when they come in, specifically clients who are struggling with an addiction to escorts or prostitutes. And when we start diving deep into it and they begin to realize that, ah, shit, there's so much more going on that I was not aware of. I didn't think of the fact that what I'm doing is something that's going to affect a kid somewhere. A kid is going to find out what their mother does. They're going to be aware of it. And that's going to change their life forever. To end this episode, I want you to spend a few minutes thinking about if you have hurt anyone with your sexual behavior. Now, your first mental reaction is going to be to deny it immediately. Nope, I haven't watched, I haven't hurt anyone. I just watch porn like everybody else. Millions of people do it. So if I'm hurting people, you know, others are hurting people. We're all hurting people together. Or no, I, I, I don't do that. The type of pornography I watch, it is obvious that these people want to do it. They started their own, you know, Pornhub premium or whatever. They, they made a choice to do it on the side. They seem like happy people. I see them before and after sex on camera. And they're like, whatever story you are telling yourself, go beyond it and put yourself in those people's shoes and think about what it takes 
to engage in that behavior? And why would somebody choose to do that? Just because you're viewing pornography compulsively doesn't mean that you create pornography. And if you don't create pornography, then ask yourself, why would somebody do that? And how does that hurt other people? I'll share something with you. I didn't know that porn hurt others till I had somebody who was close to me in my family get sexually abused by somebody whom I used to watch pornography with, a guy in my neighborhood. Actually, the person who introduced me to pornography ended up sexually assaulting somebody in my family, right? And I didn't think about it till years later when I found out. And I was deep in my addiction at that point. I thought it would be motivation enough to get me to quit. But it's another one of those things that made me realize the depth of my addiction. That even realizing that the person who introduced me to pornography was a hardcore porn addict. And that person also sexually abused somebody in my family. The anger from that still couldn't pull me out of my addiction. But it made me aware of many things that happened in my childhood, in high school, things that I observed and saw in college, the motivations of my friends to have sex, some of the early stories from college that involved alcohol, things I heard from friends. I began to realize how much pornography was ruining people and hurting people and I want this episode to be the beginning of a conversation that we have here. Well, not really a conversation because I'm the one talking, but a dialogue we can have mentally, right? <laughs> About the true impact of pornography on the lives of others. For the most part, I've been speaking to you about your problem and your relationship with it. But we don't rewire. We don't fully rewire until we have changed a lot of the unconscious beliefs that we have about pornography. And one of those beliefs is the beliefs that we do not hurt other people. And I've given you a few examples over the past few minutes. It is up to you to find the other examples in your life that are relevant to you. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. Whenever you're ready, there are a few ways that I can help you end your out-of-control behavior with pornography or masturbation. The first way is if you haven't already, download a free copy of my ebook. It's called Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn-Free Men. And it is the roadmap to ending your compulsive behavior. There's a link to download a copy of this book in the description below the podcast, wherever you're listening to it. The second way is to jump on my free training. Now, it's also called Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men, but it's actually a live training where I go into a lot more detail about my system. I talk about the men who have successfully controlled their behavior for two years and over five years, men who have followed my system. And I think that's a very powerful way to change the way you think about recovery from pornography and other sexually compulsive behaviors. The third way that I can help you is to join our free Facebook group. Now, I understand there are many men who do not use Facebook, and that's absolutely fine. If you do use Facebook, check out the group. It's called the Porn Reboot Group. It's a free group, and it is private as well, so don't worry about anything you post in there being you know, posted somewhere else. But it's a great community where men are learning how to use the system. That's where they're getting accountability partners. And once you understand that there is a certain way of ending this behavior, which is more efficient, effective, rational, and makes sense, chances are you're going to want to be around men who are progressing in the same way. Men who are not counting. Men who are not using willpower men who are improving multiple areas of their life and they realize that ending this behavior is not just about their sexual behavior. It's about completely transforming their lives as men. 
there is a little bit of a wait to get into the group because we do screen every single person who comes into our community. We want you to be in a community of winners. So there are certain criteria we look for. Please do not send us a message saying like, hey, I haven't been accepted into the group. We accept everyone who we feel is qualified into the group. And if you're not accepted into the group within two weeks, chances are, well, we're not going to accept you. And the final way is if you are at a point where you would like to end your behavior quicker, you've been making some progress, but you know, you just you feel that you could make more progress in a shorter amount of time. Or if you're the type of person who likes predictability. You're like, hey, if you can tell me and show me how I'm going to feel a month from now, two months from now, and tell me what to expect, that's my style. Right. Or if you are a person who likes more guidance, you're like, this is all great, JK, but I don't want a course. I want to have access to you. I want to be able to speak to you one on one. And I want you to be able to guide me step by step. And I want to be able to check in with you and kind of see what sort of progress I'm making. And if I'm going off the wrong track, I want you to guide me back. Then you may be a good fit for our reboot intensive group. And there's a link to schedule a call with one of my reboot strategists. Just to make it clear, my reboot strategists are men who have actually ended their out of control behavior. And in some cases, they are former clients of mine. So they are perfect people to speak to, to find out if you're a good fit to join the reboot intensive program. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. And I'll speak to you in a couple of days.